Let's take a look here at investment picks and strategies for your portfolio. David Strzewski is with us, CEO at Sound Planning Group. I'm glad you're here. I mean, I was talking about the jobs report. We're going to have a whole panel on this, but if you could touch on it, did it make uh, any difference in your investment strategy today? Well, it's great to be with you, Nicole, as always. Um, you know, as far as my investment strategy goes, I think we're actually getting a lot of the same. And and now I, I'm going to come out and share maybe a little bit differently uh, as I'm actually in the hard landing camp. Uh, but it's kind of weird right now, you know, whether we get really good jobs data, which, you know, this is being known as, and then people are saying, oh, we're, we've avoided a recession. If we get bad jobs data, the answer is, oh, the Fed's going to cut. If we get neutral data, the answer is, oh, it's a soft landing. All answers point, point to right now, it's going to be a bull market, at least here for the short term. I think that we're going to actually have a melt up, which is, you know, we could see some real nice volatility on the, on the upside here. But that's also going to be probably a little bit of a mixed bag going on. Uh, when I look at the, uh, the, the unemployment or the jobs numbers here today, a couple things stand out to me that I think are kind of important to understand if we're really uh, assessing what's going on here. Yes, they did beat last month by over 100,000 jobs. That's significant. But we just got to remember real quick, though, that the jobs information has been revised on a consistent basis. So let's not get too excited here. The second thing to note about this is that over 187,000 of these 154,000 jobs um, are were, were literally um, government jobs. So it's seven. 72 uh, percent. Anytime that we've exceeded 60 percent as a nation where we're going into government jobs, uh, we have actually been in a recession at that moment and point in time. And so I'm, I'm not making up the statistics. That's just an interesting observation that 73 percent of these jobs are government jobs. Uh, and then uh, the last part of that is that, you know, you know, there's the quality of a job versus the quantity of the job. If you look today at the uh, people who are working multiple jobs, uh, that is actually at the highest place that it's ever been in the United States history. And second part to that is if you look at foreign born job applicants who are getting jobs versus U.S. or native born, uh, the foreign born are getting a lot more, which tells me that's part of the reason why we're seeing wage deflation while at the same time we have unions going on strike looking for serious increases because the reality is life is much more expensive today than it used to be. Uh, yeah, I mean, I heard this morning, I didn't double check this number, but that uh, U.S. jobs were actually down year over year, U.S. born folks down year over year. Um, those that were not born here, I guess, coming over too, you would add them in, um, that they had seen well over a million jobs added, um, just to sort of put some perspective on that. That being said, with a market that seems to be a little back and forth, to your point, you're more in the hard landing camp, not in the soft landing camp. So a little bit worried, it sounds like. So when you do that, you turn to precious metals and miners. And we've seen gold at new highs last week. We've seen silver at new highs today. If you look at SLV, for example, right? We don't talk about SLV as much, but gold hit this new high last week. And sure, it's pulled back uh, slightly. It's down 0.4% this week, but really a stellar, stellar performance. And you like names like Barrick Gold and Hakla Mining. You still think there's room to run for the group. And these stocks don't necessarily always go with the commodity itself, but just wanted to hear some of your thoughts. Yeah, thank you so much. So um, I think this is an important moment for us to be paying attention, right? Because it's kind of pr everything's sort of priced to perfection, at least based upon my view, because the reports are coming out. Everything leads to, you know, uh, higher highs. So let's keep doing that. Right. Um, so, so here's reality. I don't believe that inflation's under control. And I think that if that entrenches in 25, it's not going to be a really positive moment for uh, most things that are going to be more interest rate sensitive uh, or inflation sensitive. Uh, and then the other part is, is the unemployment, I think, is becoming a little bit unhinged here. So the Fed is is, is going to be, you know, the, 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 the big component on what happens. I think that they're going to ultimately cut. And so I think that it's going to, you know, produce a nice environment for stocks in general. One of the places, though, that we're going to see opportunities is in the miners. And so, yeah, when we get gold at $2,700, that tells me that inflation is still present with us because it takes 2700 or more U.S. dollars to buy an ounce of gold than it did the last time that we checked in on it. And so that's part of the reason why gold has actually been one of the best investments that you could have made uh, since COVID uh, actually began. And so as, as much of a run as we've seen everywhere else, uh, gold has actually performed exceptionally well. But to your point, silver uh, is, is ultimately, in my opinion, going to lead the way. And we're still looking at about, I don't know, 40 percent uh, uh, 
you know, to to go uh, in order to get up to the all time high of 50. So uh, silver is still a great opportunity uh, to, to get to the, the picks, though. Barrett Gold, uh, they're the biggest, best value company out there, in my opinion. Uh, these guys have been uh, uh, doing this for a very long time. They're operating at like 33 percent margin right now. And so when you're operating with good cash flows and gold keeps going up, that means your cash flow is going to continue to stay positive. So I think that they've got room to grow either way. Hecla Mining uh, is a silver player, a North American silver player. So, you know, the big question that's going to be a, ahead of us here is what happens in 31 days on November 5th when everyone goes to the polls? Here's what I think that we can know for sure. Uh, not necessarily the outcome, but we're going to know for sure that I don't think either side is going to capitulate that election, that we're not going to get a winner that day. So if that happens, you know, what, what direction is this thing going to go? I think there's a high probability that we're going to be doing more here in the United States and in North America. So I think Hecla Mine is actually uh, positioned really well because they've been around since the 1800s. Uh, they got a, a great dividend, 38% uh, 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 margins for operation. I think that they are positioned so well right now. And not only is there an opportunity to grow, this is an organization that has an opportunity to like really lead as the trend may come back to uh, uh, mining more so here in North America as opposed to just everywhere else and uh, valuing some of these companies here at home. Yeah, I mean, when we think about gold, I can't even go back to the pandemic, but we certainly remember when it was around 1,500, you know, and now you're taking talking 2,700. So it certainly has been a great move. I mean, just in one year alone, we saw some really nice gains um, to the tune of 45 so it certainly has been a winner, but you think this is somewhat of a safe haven. What about some of the other sectors that people love to watch or they consider those to be more safe or defensive? Yeah, well, so oil has been doing terrible uh, if you if you track it on a month over month basis here as of recent. Obviously, it's turning around right now because, you know, we've got these these engagements. It, it, so um, I think that there's a great opportunity right now in oil. Um, I'm very much bullish on U.S. based oil. Um, and I think that, uh, that that we've got, you know, think organizations that are producing something are going to do really well. Guess what? Technology is going to continue to, uh, to to lead and innovate here too. But what I'm really looking for in the tech space is, is that mass adoption. Who's going to make my life easier because of AI? Not just do cool tricks and kind of impress me and putting something together, but like who's going to make my life and function of life easier? I think whoever answers those questions, it could be Apple, could be Microsoft, could be some of the others here. But the point is, is that they're likely going to to, to really lead uh, as well as we are, um, you know, the first movers are, are really going to get this figured out. But I just want to cautious people on maybe some places to to just be a little bit, you know, careful of. And that is, uh, you know, I see NVIDIA as one of the fastest growing companies that has really ever been. No question. Um, it is a part of the reason why the market's up so significantly. It got there so fast, though. Its market cap is so large. I wonder if it's going to be able to keep it in comparison to some of the other chip makers that are coming up. We don't have we haven't really had the conversation of what's the best chip, which would be the combination of power, efficiency, uh, upgrading abilities, etc. And what we're doing right now is we're just saying, hey, who can do it the fastest, who can get the most? And, um, you know, these are great, great uh, uh, chips, but we might be overbuilding them a little bit. All right. So we'll have to watch that. A cautionary tone on NVIDIA and um, looking to some names like Barrick Gold and Hecla Mining. Thank you, David Strzewski, CEO, Sound Planning Group. Thank you.